okay so i'll start with a nice easy one so you spent maybe just over six months filming in liverpool uh how did you find the experience what was it like i've, I've worked in liverpool sort of uh, off and on for about 30 years and 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 watched liverpool sort of grow through the european city of culture uh, and just become more and more beautiful and it was already amazing so I love Liverpool and and the last time I had been there it even it, it flourished even more and the sort of cafe culture and all of that and so I, I it's it's a it's a city that's really close to my heart so and I was living in Sefton Park and walk, I had my dogs over from America, and and so, so you lived in the park. I lived in the park. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Paramount didn't push to a flat. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. Know, so I get the, body, the the dogs next to me, like, yeah, like having a, like, like a sort of <laughs> like a blanket. Oh, man. Did you love Liverpool? <coughs> that's didn't. a leading question. They gave me a flat. Oh. What? what? Yeah, they gave me a flat. Oh, because um, yeah, it's snowed. I got home home. Home. <laughs> I had I had never. Strangely, I'd never been. To Liverpool, I never even passed through it. But a city I've always been fascinated by, and this is such a cliche to say, but a massive Beatles fan, and like not just the Beatles, but so many great bands come out of Liverpool. And I love music. Um, and the first thing I noticed was it has this, I don't know, the people just have this sort of um, gorgeous charm yeah. um, everywhere you go, and that sort of that's just throughout our crew and yep. you know, some of our cast, and just everyone you meet there seems to have this lovely warmth and like a buoyancy a buoyancy and it reminded me of glasgow a little bit in that yeah. sense um you know it's a city set on a river and yeah i had an amazing time there and i usually get quite homesick when i'm away for long periods of time i was there for about eight months i think mm. in total but i could have stayed you know longer um so it's a city that i'm really really fond of so how much kind of creative freedom did you have kind of building the backstory for you know, Don and Gal's relationship? Um, that's a good question. I, I mean, I started with the film, and I watched the film over and over again, and then I parked the film and went to the scripts. And the film kind of was inspiring, but it also could be limiting if I was going to try and just mimic what Ben Kingsley does amazingly in that movie. So I took little bits from the film and then the, took what I could from the, from the script and everything else I was free to invent. So although there was certain constraints on what I could do as this character, there was also a lot of freedom within those walls. And did you really throw a washing machine off a roof? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I did. It wasn't a washing machine, I think it was just the barrel. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, how disappointing. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't push to a washing machine. <laughs> um, uh, and Tamsin, for you, uh, your first reading of the script, how did your character kind of evolve from that as you began starting to get into her role and how she is as a, as a poet? Yeah, I was really fascinated by the language that she uh, uses as kind of ammunition. Um, uh, uh, quite a few of her lines are direct um, pulls from the film. And so I watched the film a lot just to see where those had been taken from or what was uh, the fire behind each of them. Um, I was interested in Ben Kingsley's gestures, so I tried to incorporate the kind of the physicality of that. Um, but then also just personally investigating what it is to be a woman who is put in a position where she has to bring up a younger brother as though he were her child. And within that environment where there's so little and it's, it's aggressively male, and I think the response, particularly with the costume designer, Kathy Pryor, was that she is a, an aggressively feminine fighter mm. which I thought was really fun I believe the last two episodes you directed as well mm -hmm. how did that process change for you from then stepping into director's role you know for the last two episodes so. um, I, I I love set life I love being on set I love I love being around crew um, so I already had a really sort of strong relationship with the camera boys and the sound crew because I just love watching what they do. I love looking at why they're choosing a lens in a certain way and I know it and also because I direct knowing what that lens is going to do and sometimes watching and learning from other people and kind of going, oh, that's really interesting. Why are they doing that? Um, also, you know, when I when I arrived back from 
New York to direct, we went on a tech recce, and uh, my first my first um, set was actually um, Cecilia and Don's sort of arcade and and the above area, and it was it is so interesting with film and it, especially when you're on location, you can go to a street that feels like it's probably not of our world, but then you go into the set and it is completely 1994. You could even say that that arcade is like 1984. Yeah. And, and so I love, one of the first things I always say when I'm directing is the first thing I say to the crew is there are no wrong ideas, everybody gets a say. And, and I want this to be a collaborative process and we are all cogs in the, this giant thing. Everybody gets a say. And, and I want this to be a collaborative process and we are all cogs in the, this giant thing. And so I, I always start like that because I really love being with people who are brilliant at doing their job and not having to micromanage them and letting them be what they are. So, because then it becomes about play and playing with these amazing actors that I'd already got to know. So for me, it was, it was a transition that I was a little scared by because not least James and Sarah, but these two are amazing. And, and, and what they had crafted and what they were doing was so extraordinary to watch and be part of that, that you know, it was, it was a little bit scary to go in and be um, not in charge of, but sort of um, ushering their performances onto, onto film, if you like, although it's not film anymore, of course, but also a great honor. So I, I think that, that one thing it did for me as an actor that was really interesting, because I haven't directed myself for ages, and you know I, I prefer not to do that when I'm directing, was it really freed me performance-wise because I was so concentrated on everybody else. So it was a lovely process, and, and those last six weeks were like batshit crazy. We were doing like 45 days in 25, so we had three sets running, and but there was a propulsion to it, and there was an energy, and there was a desire for us to all, you know, succeed. So I, I think it was quite a joyous end. What was your favorite? scene to shoot? That's not an easy one. Got one? I did really love the scene uh, between Cecilia and Teddy Bass and Stan. It's a great scene. It, you think it's a three-hander. It's actually a four-hander because there's a glass with a drink in it that have got bubbles in it that they cut to every now and then with a the bubble going... <laughs> <laughs> So I, I did love that kind of the triumvirate of power in that. But as Stephen was saying, you know, he directed that you know the, the final scene between Cecilia and Don in episode eight, which is kind of like the the culmination of the the storm of of where they've come from and where they've arrived, and it's so powerful but heartbreaking and dangerous. Uh, it was really hard to shoot. And I kept hugging him <laughs> yeah. between takes because you know it's so vicious. Um, so I found that I found that quite upsetting. But you know, Stephen set up a you know, very playful and open environment. So I re I really really enjoyed. I'm going to choose that scene because these two are amazing. And and Thank you. and I and I, I I'll get stupidly emotional. I I I love watching actors play, and I love watching actors find things. And, and, and one of the great joys of, of directing is sometimes seeing a moment evolve and, 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 and it's in its infancy at that point and being able to go in and just pick that moment. You don't have to give a note about the whole scene. You can go in and there was a moment where this happened and I think that might be something that might play throughout and then brilliant actors will just go, oh, or sometimes you walk in and go, I'm just coming over to give you a, a little break because I haven't got any notes. But by going in and giving them that, it, g it gets a reset time while they get to, I haven't got any notes, do it again. Mm. But it looks like I'm giving a note. <clears throat> also, the environment is a character that will talk to you as well. Yeah. There are, when Iman sat down in the chair that we had been given, which is opposite Cecilia's desk, it had wheels on it. 
and we didn't know that that was going to happen <laughs> suddenly, which I think it really fed into Cecilia's uh, humour at this ridiculous young boy. Who, who, that's how she encounters him, is that he's doing this kind of, you to know, he's just mm. dragging the, the chair <laughs> along like you would at school because it's got wheels on. And then shuffling. It's so beautifully true and playful. It's, so it, it's, I've just answered for you. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Was that your favourite scene? That was also It was his favourite scene. scene as well. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I mean, <laughs> yeah. That was your favourite prop. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I had favourite scenes with each character yeah. 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 that I worked with. Yeah. Um, and James will be really sad when he hears yeah, no, it. And I'm going to make a point of telling him. Yeah, because yeah. most of your scenes are with him. And you can't remember. I can't remember, can't remember. Can't remember. I can't remember any scene with James. Like, I'm, I'm going to tell him that you couldn't think of anything. <laughs> yeah. In fact, he went, James. Who? Yeah. yeah. But no, that scene in particular, and having Stephen there as director, and I think it was one of the first things, like, it was straight in at the deep that end. That was really tough. It was the culmination of <laughs> this relationship, and it was one of those scenes that you see on the page, and you're sort of looking at the schedule thinking, when is that scene? Is it today? Is it today? And then it comes. And, um, you know, you have certain expectations, but then you get onto the floor or into the space and the chair has wheels or the door opens that way. And just you giving us the opportunity to, to have freedom <laughs> in that space was uh, thrilling. The set yeah. of cups, oh, yeah. yeah. and he puts it, he's that. like going, and then throws so it down, annoying. and I'm a bit like, wait, whoa, whoa, that's got a hard <laughs> tell oh, point that. on the end of it. Well, you don't <laughs> throw that around, mm. and it's so true to who Don is. He At that throws point as well, a because tiny he's got dangerous to a, thing. He's got to a point where he's not, he's not kowtowing to her. He's anymore. trying to find the circle and just throws it. D like it's, it was such a beautiful moment. You didn't know, even know you were that clever. I don't know, I don't know. I, well, don't tell him. What compass? <laughs> What's the yeah, compass? the one that shows you where you're headed. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, touch on it a little bit then, but were there any funny moments on set, or you know, unexpected moments? A bit like you said before with the chair. I I think that there is humour laced throughout it, and and when there is an undercurrent of tension within the whole piece, so when those moments of comedy come, which are written in a lot of the time, but because you're working with such brilliant performers, they will find something and and the, the challenge is not laughing because you're because it's it's serious stuff, but there's some very funny moments throughout the piece and that then engenders a sort of comedy moment as soon as you cut, which is which can be really, really lovely. And then having to get yourself back into the serious nature of it again is just yeah, the yeah, best. Yeah. Yeah. Don is very, very intense and desperately trying to understand what's going on all the time in amongst all of the binging that's going on in his head. So when he allows himself to smile, out pop Eamon's uh, dimples. And you don't get it very often in the series, but I used to watch for them. It's like, can, is Don going to get... Is Don's mm. dimples, dimple Don, is it going to is he gonna turn up? I always used to find that really wonderful because Celia was always looking for that. It's like, because then I can just smack those off your face. Yeah. Yes. Because <laughs> she can use them. Yeah, it's licensed to slap. Um, but no, funny moments, just working with sort of crews in Liverpool. I mean, so many funny characters and such great yeah. sense of humour across the board that it was like a laugh a minute, just, yeah. just working with the team. Yep. Um, in three words, if you could each sum up your character. How long have you got? Yeah. I'll go, um, childlike, broken, violent. Original sexy beast. Good. <laughs> um, Post-traumatic sexy beast. <laughs> um, I, I, that's hyphenated. Yes, I know, that's a hyphenated. I think... Um, Silent, violent, fluid. Ugh. I don't want to drink that. <laughs> it's not a drink, darling. <laughs> what will you have? I'll have a silent, violent, no, fluid, it. please, thanks. With you, ice? Off you go, you'll be in the bathroom. <laughs> On fire. <laughs> oh, that's great. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank Liverpool.